Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got five more cool knives that you can absolutely check out right now. Each and every one of these models is currently available, and I will link them right down below so that you can check them out for yourselves. Uh, as is the case with every video in this series, the idea is to expose new people to some cool stuff and some interesting stuff, some stuff that you might not know exists. And uh, for people who have been around for a while and are aware of some of this, this stuff is worth a second look if you've never experienced it. Thanks to my patrons who are supporting me. Link for Patreon right down below. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. This first knife is what I would consider to be a budget knife and a good model. This is the Kubi Hide. Now, this is uh, pretty straightforward as far as construction. We have G10, we have a steel liner lock, and we've got sort of a I don't know if we call it a drop point or something like that, but uh, you know the uh, the mechanism for deployment is a front flipper or top flipper, but it also has the option for people who don't like to deploy their knives that way as uh, you know being deployable with a thumb hole, and that includes you know the just the standard flick, and then you can also do the reverse flick. This is nice for somebody trying to you know get a little bit of experience with a front flipper because it's a non-traditional, at least as of right now, it's a non-traditional means of opening your knife. We're more used to thumb studs and flippers and just the thumb hole, right? Or in some cases, it's more of like a two-handed opening. This is a good one to start with. It comes in at $70. And the nice thing, the thing that I like, if you're new, 14C28N is one of the very best steels as far as all around, right? We're considering not just edge retention, but ease of sharpening, toughness, and corrosion resistance. It's one of the best balances in terms of a composition that you can get for under $100. Now, these knives are made in China, but Kubi makes a super high quality pocket knife, and it's gonna be apparent from the moment that you, you know, handle this. Ergonomics are good, there's a good choke up spot. It's also compact, and it comes with a decent pocket clip other than that little bill right there. There's really not much to complain about here. This is just a straightforward good knife. And uh, you haven't seen the review on it yet, but spoiler alert, it's one that I recommend. Let's move on here to something that is more expensive for those of you who have kind of graduated into an, an, uh, an upper tier, right? Not in terms, I'm not saying that the upper tier is the only place to get good utility, but if you appreciate some, you know, some of the more fancy stuff, uh, the new Wii Speedster is definitely in the same ballpark when we're talking about the thing that we and Civivi are doing right now with this very simple, straightforward aesthetic. This has a couple of additional elements that I appreciate, like the little milling lines right here, and I love this sort of icy, anno, tumbled finish that we've got going on in the titanium. This is titanium and CPM 20 CV, definitely gonna be more pricey at about $230. Like I said, it's doing a lot of the same stuff that we has been doing here lately, but this one in particular, like if you're gonna go with a plain aesthetic, everything about this knife goes with everything else even the pocket clip, which is just their run of the mill titanium pocket clip that they put on almost everything now, even the pocket clip kind of goes with the personality here. It's big enough, right? One of the issues that I've had with some of the nicer Wii knives lately is that they're all, a lot of them just seem to be too small for the design, but this is a nice big open area on the grip. This is about an eight inch knife with a three and a half inch blade. We have that nice action. Um, little little details that I appreciate again, like the hole in the flipper tab, that's cool. I also appreciate the uh, stops that are attached to the blade, but are sort of garaged behind the frame. It's really nice. It's just a nice sleek looking knife. And if you don't want to flip it, you can absolutely use that fuller to do the reverse flick. I like this new, what I'm assuming is like a glass blasting on the blade. The cutting geometry is really good and it's just an overall utilitarian straightforward blade shape. If you are a fan of a simple aesthetic, you want a full size knife and you want something more premium, the Wii Speedster, I have no idea why it's named that because it's no faster than any other flipper on the market. The Wii Speedster is definitely a good choice. This does come in a few different configurations as does the Kubi. So if you don't like blue or in the case of the Kubi, you don't like black, check the link and all the different colors will be listed there. Moving on here, here's one that most people watching, I'm gonna assume, are probably familiar with. If you're somebody who doesn't like to fiddle around with, oh, it's real nice and I don't wanna get it dirty and I'm afraid that I might break, I'm afraid I might break the tip, right? <laughs> Ah, the Mora Robust. Not often that I show a fixed blade on this channel, but those people who are, you know, if you're if you're very familiar with the world of knives in general, not just folding knives, 
chances are you have at least seen Mora knives listed on various retailers. I have not been overly kind to this knife, but the composition and the geometry, you can see here, uh, carbone, I believe is how we pronounce that. The, uh, it's nothing special in terms of like, we're not talking about an ultra performance oriented, like, you know, forever cutting machine. Uh, but the Scandi grind and the uh, ed the tip geometry, right? Just the general way that this is built and the co and the uh, the composition. This is a tough knife. It's also like a twenty dollar knife. Yes, you heard that correctly. This is like a twenty dollar knife. Now, if you do things periodically, right? I don't want to pretend that people don't do this kind of stuff regularly. In some cases, you might not have exactly the right tool on you. And nor and I am I'm going to go ahead and say that I don't. I'm not somebody who's like, yeah, go ahead and abuse your knives and use them for literally anything. Obviously, if you can, use the right tool. But if you do find yourself in a situation where you don't have exactly the right tool and this is the only thing on you, it's not a bad choice because it will likely stand up to the abuse. And if it doesn't, you are not out that much money. There are definitely some people that buy a Mora and they use it until it is destroyed and then they buy another one. And even if they go through 10 of these, right? 10 of them in, in a lifetime, um, they get all that use out of it. They've still spent less than somebody who only buys something like this once, right? So this is justified and it's honestly something I think that just about anybody can find room for, right? This is no secret. I'm not trying to present this as something that's new that people don't know about. The Mora has an awesome reputation. They have a whole bunch. You don't have to go there with the Robust, but they have an awesome reputation for just being incredibly cost efficient and insanely durable. This is something that just about everybody should have, you know, if not like in your in your collection or hanging on your mantle, right? In your uh, in the console of your your truck or your car or wherever, or in your garage or just with your other tools, right? They usually come with some type of sheath like this sheath, and it's not really all that impressive, but it will you know kind of hang off your person and do what it's got to do. These are incredible. I cannot recommend these enough. Moving on here, I'm going to cheat a little bit. This is technically a, life, a knife, but it's also a lot of other things. It's also something that people are very familiar with, but it's, it's something that I recommend, you know, if you are strictly a knife person, I think you can find uh, use for something like this, specifically this one, and that's gonna be the Leatherman Wave. Um, I love this thing and I use it all the time for all sorts of stuff. Um, these things are unbelievably tough. They all come, I'm gonna tell you right now, the blade, like the actual cutting bevel geometry is, it's nowhere near as perfect as some of the other stuff you'd expect in this price range. It's just a single bladed knife, right? But the blade will do the trick. I think these are 420 HC blades. But then you of course have you know, the pliers and the wire cutters. These are replaceable on the Leatherman Wave Plus. It's 154 CM. These have been awesome and have just chewed through everything. You can also, um, something that I actually should have brought down here um, for this video. There's a whole bunch of tools. We're not going to go through each and every one. You can check those out in the link. This guy right here, and by the way, all of these tools lock, which has been really nice. This guy right here, which has bits that will fit specifically in here. You can also buy the extension tool and the bits and the little ratchet extension as well, which, you know, is fairly expensive, but it's really been great. I have used this thing all over my house and in my yard and just little things. And sometimes, I'm going to be honest with you, sometimes I will opt for carrying the Leatherman Wave, depending on what it is that I'm doing, over a single bladed knife because it just has everything you could need. It is a little bit bulky and you will need to buy the pocket clip extension, which is not really that big of a deal, but these are so worth it. I think these come in at about 100 or 110 bucks. If you get the black one, I think it's a little bit more expensive. I have a bunch of different multi-tools, including the uh, the Swiss tool, the uh, Spirits from um, Victorinox. I've got the uh, Leatherman Surge and I've tried a couple of others. The one that I like the most is definitely this guy. This is gonna be the most versatile and it's also you know, a good balance of being compact enough and capable enough. This is just excellent. I cannot recommend it highly enough. Definitely something that you should check out. Last but not least, this is also a knife that many people know about, but if you are new to the knife world, right? One of the questions that comes up a lot with people who are new to my channel and new to the knife world in general, they say, all right, all right, you know, skipping climbing the ladder and going through the budget thing and coming up here and going through the super steel thing and climbing up and doing all the crap. What's the knife that offers, you think, the best amount of utility, the most realistic utility and the most realistic performance for the materials used dollar for dollar, what knife is it? 
I have been saying this for a long time and I still think this. This is the Ritter Pogue RSK MK1 G2 or Mach 1 G2. It is a Knifeworks exclusive. You can get it in the large or small size. This is US made, has wonderfully textured G10, fantastic ergonomics, a great pocket clip. We have CPM, well now, I don't know if they're M390 or CPM 20 CV. Mine's an M390, the new ones are in 20 CV. There's almost no difference between those compositions. One's, uh, the M390 is made by Bowler. The CPM 20 CV is made here in the United States by Crucible, um, but they're going to perform almost exactly the same. Wonderful corrosion resistance, great um, edge retention, and the geometry of this blade actually accentuates this composition rather than just being some weird shape and they throw 20 CV on it to make it seem premium. No, the cutting geometry of this thing is excellent. Furthermore, it has the able lock, which is essentially the axis lock, but it works perfectly. This knife, I have used, this is my size comparison knife, one of the main ones. I have flipped this thing out every single day. I've used it for little things periodically. It's definitely no stranger to use here and there. It's not something that I carry all the time because I've got so many knives, but this is a knife that I love. This is a knife that is so well designed, so ridiculous, and the final price tag, well, it is expensive. If you wanna put it up against everything else that's out there and dollar for dollar say, you can get you know this amount of utility for this amount of money, right, or every dollar accounts for a certain amount of utility. I really think that this knife is still the point of diminishing returns in the knife world. Now, that's not saying that every single person needs to go out and buy this. You can still get a perfectly functional tool for like 40 bucks if you really want to, right? But this is awesome. You could technically buy this and never need anything else. The Ritter Hogue RSK Mach 1 G2, I don't know if the smaller one's a different model number, but at 150, 160, maybe 165, there might be a little bit of a price bump here at some point because of inflation, right? But this is still so excellent and incredibly highly recommended. If you are new, this is a knife that is sure to bring you joy, whether you go with the large one or the small one, I'll make sure and link it. So once again, Ritter Hogue RSK MK1 G2. We have the Leatherman Wave Multi-Tool. We have the Mora Robust Fixed Blade. We have the Wii uh, Speedster, which is brand new for 2022. And then we have the Kubi Hide. I like to kind of spread these out and do things that are from different countries at various price ranges so that the people watching can kind of find something from here or there that appeals to them. But all of these are good choices. Um, and I think the people who decide to pick them up will be happy with them. That's going to be pretty much it for uh, Five Cool Knives today. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at Metal underscore Complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.